Hello everybody and welcome back to the item series code along and today we're going to go ahead and start spawning things in game based on well what's in our database so let's go ahead we'll jump in and uh, let's make some errors the first thing I want to do is go ahead and set up a demo scene and we already have a scenes folder and I actually do already have a demo scene so I'm gonna go ahead and use that I do want to make a folder though uh, we're going to have multiple demo scenes as we test certain functionalities out as we go along. So I want to have different scenes for each one. So I'm just going to call this demo one. I'm actually going to go ahead and rename the scene as well. Demo one. Drop it in the folder. Double click. And there we go. Let's go ahead. We'll make something here that we can attach our script that we're going to create to. We could just attach it to one of these, but I actually like to have something visible in the screen or scene. And for this here, I'm just gonna go ahead and make a sphere. And what do we want here? We'll just go ahead, we'll just leave it like that. I'm gonna set it to regular origin. And I'm just gonna go ahead and save that scene off. So we're in the folder down here. I do wanna create another folder for the scripts. And we'll go ahead, we'll open that up. And I'm gonna go ahead and create a script here. Of course, it's C sharp and Usually I call these drivers. I'm just going to call it demo one. And we'll go ahead, we'll open this up. I'm going to make a couple comments up top. The thing I want to do is, well, connect somehow to the database. And then after that, I want to spawn or spawn <laughs> items from the database. That's it. It's really not that much we want to do today. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the functions that Unity gives me that are built in. Well, if we need them, we can just add them again. And I'm going to go ahead and add this onto my sphere. So I'll just select my sphere, drag it on. And is it there? Yeah, it's there. Actually, let's go ahead and use one of those attributes that we learned about last month. I want to be sure there's never more than one of these attached. So let's, let's use the disallow multiple component. That way there, we can only ever have one demo script on the sphere. It won't allow us to add another one. Great. So let's go ahead. We'll jump into the script. The first thing I want to do is allow me to, well, connect to the database somehow. And there's a couple ways we can do this. We can go ahead and create a variable. Then in our wake function, go ahead and search for it. I know later on down the line, I want to create another asset in the actual database folder here that'll contain references to all of these. So I can just say, you know, get the weapon database and access this little asset here, and it'll automatically go ahead and grab whatever database we need. So to make this as simple as possible, all I'm gonna do is say, IS weapon. Whoops, we can't do that yet. What we have to do is make sure we're using the right namespace for the Bergzerg Arcade database. And this was an item system. Of course, if you named yours differently, you'll have to go ahead and put the right namespace up there. So now we should be able to make a public IS weapon database. And for now, I'm just gonna call it database. It's the only database we'll be playing with in this script. Let's go ahead, we'll save that off. We're gonna go jump back into Unity. And look at the sphere here. Come on, update, there we go. So I'm gonna go ahead, take this, drag it in. Try it again. There we go. And I'm not sure what this is. Don't think it has anything to do with our actual script itself. I believe it's just a Unity thing. Well, let's go ahead and see if everything works anyway. So we have that over there. I'm going to ahead and save the scene just to make sure it doesn't crash or if it does, I can get everything back. And we start it up and it starts fine. No errors. Perfect. So I'm going to come down and since I'm going to be coding all my GUI stuff anyway, I'm going to go ahead and use the old on GUI method. We could use the new Unity GUI system, but this is probably faster since we're just doing tests. Now I want to go ahead and stick a button up there. So I'm just going to use the GUI layouts. I don't really care how it looks. I just want the functionality of a button up there. And then what button do we want? I just want a string up there. So I'm actually just going to go with number two. And the string I want, I'm just going to say spawn. Let's put it in the parentheses though. All right, so underneath, we want to go ahead and call a function, which I guess I'll have to come down here and make ahead of time. And it will be private, and I'm just going to call it spawn. There we 
we go. So we'll call that function every time this button is clicked. And it looks like I lost that parenthesis. We'll put that there. And all we're going to do is come into the database. We're going to debug log out the name for now. And we'll go into the database that we've assigned here. Dot. We're going to get. And it wants an index. So we're just going to say, well, for now, we're just going to grab zero, which will be the first element. And we're going to grab the name. That's it. We're just going to debug log out that name just to see if we can access stuff. We'll go ahead, save it off, come back into Unity. No errors appear. We'll go ahead, we'll start. Um, I don't like where that button is, but it doesn't matter. When we click it, we actually do get the name showing up. Let's go ahead, we'll stop that, jump back into Unity. Or model develop, I mean. And let's actually go ahead and make a for loop. And we'll go through and we'll show all the weapons. So I'm going to come up here and make a for loop. Um, so we'll just say CNT is my default counter. CNT is less than database dot count. CNT plus plus. So I'll have to move those in. And then instead of saying spawn, let's make sure we can actually get the, the right number of buttons first. But later on, we'll put the name up here. Let's go ahead and save this off, jump in. We should get a series of buttons. We'll have to look at the database to see how many we actually have in there. So one, two, three, four, five uh, database. Let's take a look here. And we have five in there as well. So we are getting the count properly. So let's go ahead and change these names to whatever the name of the weapon is. We'll spawn colon space and we'll just add on. We already have it down here. So I'm just gonna copy paste it. Actually, let's cut and paste it because I'm gonna be getting rid of that soon. Save that off, come back in. I guess we should have stopped it first, but we'll go ahead, we'll start it back up. And it's just grabbing zero. We didn't add CNT, did we? We did not. We'll try it one more time and we should get all the proper names. Short sword, dagger, knife, club, fan. Short sword, dagger, knife, club, fan. All right, so it's grabbing that. So let's go ahead and actually start spawning the prefab for it. So now I'm going to start passing in the CNT, which is the counter. And that means we'll have to accept one here. I'm just going to call it index. And I'm going to start off by creating an IS weapon. And I'm just going to call it ISW. And this is going to be equal to database dot get index that we're passing in and that's it and the reason why i'm doing this is we're going to be using this line quite a bit so instead of just it's basically just saving a little bit of typing so now i want to create a game object so we'll say game object is equal to oh sorry we got to name it and i'm just gonna call it weapon it's equal to instantiate, and then what we want to instantiate. We got three methods here. We can do a generic, uh, the original. So let's just go ahead and just do the the first one. Well, let's do the second one. We'll return as a game object. So we'll go ahead and say isw dot prefab. And we'll just go ahead. We'll save that off jump into the database and we have to make sure that all of them have a prefab assigned to it. So we only have one prefab too, I believe. You can go ahead and make more if you want. Um, let's see, test prefab, short sword, which is just a cube. That's fine. Jump back into the database, just make sure they all have one. Uh, we didn't have one there, that would cause an error. Knife has one. Dagger has one, short sword has one. Great, so they all have one now. Let's go, we'll start it up. And let's go ahead and hit the knife. And as we see here, it spawned it. And it tells you what it is. It's the a clone of the short sword prefab. Uh, the first thing I wanna do is go ahead and change that name. But if we take a look at it, it's the exact same as the prefab that we have down here. So 
So as we spawn more items in, they're all gonna say that they're clones of whatever this prefab is. So let's go ahead and first off, change that name. So we can say weapon dot name is equal to ISW dot name. Go ahead, we'll save that off, jump back in, and this should allow us to start spawning them in. And at least we'll get the proper names. Now they are all, all in the same spot because that's where we're spawning them. But they're really not that usable right now because all we're doing is really just spawning the cube. It's, it's not even an actual, there's no weapon class attached to it. And I want to go ahead and open up the weapon class. Because when I created this, I had it, the design I had in mind was I want to go ahead and have the basic weapon class, which is, well, here. But I also want to have an editor class for it that we use in the actual editors. And it's just going to inherit from this and add on a, another interface, which will be the, well, the editor interface. And we left a line here. Yeah, right here. This code will go into the new script. So the interface is just going to have an on GUI method. So let's go ahead and we'll create that interface now. Because right now, if we try to add the IS weapon script, we are going to get an error because it does reference the editor up here. And you can't have that in your actual game. You have it in your editor, but you can't have it in the game. And just do a quick demonstration of that first. Let's go ahead and say weapon.add component. The component we want to add is IS weapon. Let's go ahead, we'll save that off. We'll jump back in. And right away, we get an error. And they're actually not mono behavior, so we actually can't add it as a component. Let's take a look here. Yeah, they're not mono behaviors. And it looks like we're actually already over 10 minutes, so we're gonna go ahead and tackle this part here tomorrow. That's what we'll jump into next. But as always, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Let me know down below in the comments how your series is going. And I'll see everyone in the next video. Bye-bye.